Hey guys, in previous videos we've constructed circuits designed to drive flyback transformers at relatively low power levels. Honestly, they've been boring and unamusing. Today, we will build a circuit which operates at several times the wattage of the last device. I intend to push this small transformer to its limits. We will feed it similar power levels to a microwave transformer approximately 500 times faster. Let's begin. Clearly, the first step is to define certain parameters of our device, namely frequency and power. I would like the circuit to operate at more than 1 kilowatt with an efficiency no less than 80%. And due to practicality, I would also like it to be powered by a nominal outlet, 120 volts, 15 amperes. Finally, it will operate at frequencies no higher than 30 kilohertz, as after this threshold, higher frequencies will come with monstrous inefficiencies. Engineers have outlined thousands of ways to generate a high frequency sinusoidal wave. However, through research and experience, I found that the best way to complete this task is through a fusion between the back null converter and a BLDC controller, a circuit I have labeled the IGBT ZVS, which has an efficiency close to 90% and can switch large currents. This circuit requires about 50 volts of direct current, so I began the project by removing the secondary coil from a microwave transformer, subsequently winding about 45 turns of a relatively heavy copper wire. This created a transformer with a secondary coil rated at 45 volts and about 25 amperes, or 1.1 kVA. Since we require direct current, I used crimp connectors to connect our transformer to a full-wave rectifier rated at 1600 volts and 100 amps, which surpasses the power requisite by more than 100 times. To complete the power supply, I connected a 680 microfarad smoothing capacitor across the DC lines of the rectifier, as is shown. This produced a relatively consistent high-power DC supply. The next and final step was to fabricate the circuit itself. The delineated schematic alongside the list of components necessary for its construction are included in the description. I used the GW30NC120HD IGBT due to its high power rating and wide frequency capabilities. I started by mounting two of these side by side on a large heatsink, as this will be our base point for all further connections. In the next clip I will be seen soldering all components to these two transistors. This is the finished product, although if I was to make the circuit again, I would replace the 2 watt 470 ohm resistors with 100 watt panel mount resistors such as these. I've included step by step instructions for the circuit's construction in the description. Anyway, once the circuit was complete, I wound 14 turns of copper wire with a diameter of 1 tenth of an inch around the, the ferrite of the flyback transformer, and enclosed it in a heat shrink to keep it from unwinding. In order to run our circuit, we connect the power leads to the output of the rectifier, elevate the gate drive wire to 24 volts, connect the primary leads to the primary coil, and apply power to our supply transformer. We can now draw arcs from the secondary coil of our flyback transformer. I would like to say that if you wish to attempt this product, I can guarantee inimitable prices for flyback transformers via the link in the description. Even with a degree in electrical engineering, you do not truly know electronics until you experiment with a flyback transformer, as without the experience of designing, building, and testing a circuit such as this one, knowledge is meaningless. You do not know until you do. This is the reason I encourage all of you to attempt this experiment, as it was not only extremely educational, but also very gratifying to see the results of my knowledge. This has been Electroman. Thanks for watching.